well, well, well. Do we have a gift from Facebook on Christmas? React team has just released React Server Components, which is an absolutely new thing in the React world, given that React always has focused the core library to be the part of client. And, you know, a little bit of server-side rendering, but not really much other than, you know, you're using Next.js or any other server-side rendering framework. But this time, this is the first time React has actually made it possible to write sort of like server rendered things in a way, just in a sane way, only by using React. Now, this is an alpha preview. This is not really production ready or anything like that. But after watching this full talk and just going through the blog and playing with the demo a little bit, I have come to a conclusion that this is a super awesome thing. And this is going to help not only just React, but Next.js and other frameworks as well. So let's get into it, what this is, how this works, and what all this about React server components. All right, so just to summarize this 57 minute talk and save your minutes, in the first five to 10 minutes, Dan talks about how you cannot really achieve, um, you know, good, cheap and fast things together, but then just contradicts his own thing because this pretty much does it, right? React server components are good, cheap, and fast. Then you have a demo of an actual application, which is this one. I'll just play around with this application as well. Uh, but this application uh, just shows you how you can make use of the React server components, right? So this, this uh, basically just, you know, here the developer, actually, I forgot the name. Let's see the name of Lauren, right? So Lauren takes you through the full application, which we have here and shows you how exactly React server components are being used. I would recommend to go ahead and watch this, this full video if you want to go in depth into how this working. But in this video, I'm just gonna show you how React server component works. So first things first, React has come on server officially official support, you know, it has been on server with React server side rendering, but this is different. This is different in the way that, first of all, the thing which you get from the server is not JSON, right? First of all, if you have used Next.js, you know that it creates HTML splits and JSON splits of file. So this is something else. This is sort of a stream of information, right? So if you take a look at this, you're going to see that this is actually, it is possible that you are getting some streams before and some streams later down the line, right? And the UI gets updated accordingly. So this is absolutely fine. Uh, in the video, Dan mentions that they will probably have a sort of a HTML renderer in front of this so that you directly get HTML later on. But right now you get streams of this data, which is passed through JavaScript and then it converts into UI. All right. So this is like the first thing that the data which you get, the server side, sort of server side rendered thing which you get is not HTML or JSON. It's, it's some different format. It looks like JSON to be honest, uh, but not really, right? Because it, it's not really JSON compatible. But anyway, that's the first thing. The next thing is if you go ahead and click on, let me just go ahead and refresh this real quick. This is a demo application. So right now you can see that if I, just refresh this again and go to the all tab. You're going to see maybe like XHR, not really all tab. You're going to see we make a single request to location. Only if I can just make it a little more readable for you. Uh, let's see, decode URI component. So we make this request, which is at localhost 4000 react location. And then we pass a JSON which says select ID is null and is editing false. Search text is blank. So this sort of updates the UI for the first time. And in the UI, you have three areas, uh, two areas mostly. The first one is this one in the center, which will display your note. And the second one is the search functionality, which will filter down the notes, right? Now, the interesting thing about this request is that it actually contains information about the component, right? and not the component itself. This is super critical. Why? Because if you go ahead and take a look inside the code, and if you zoom in a little, and if you, let's say, go to, uh, I'm gonna come to this hierarchy later on, uh, the naming convention, but let's say if we go to 
uh, app.server.js or maybe not app but edit button not really let's see if we can get something which is node.server.js for example right so you see that you have a message called click a note on the left to view something right but you're not gonna see this let me just go ahead and refresh this so you see that this is the message which we get and no we don't really want to preserve log this is the message which we get but this is actually not a react component if i go ahead and try to pick this up you're gonna find that we do not have a component which is actually having a div and a span and something like that if i go ahead and inspect it like this sure you have this thing but this is react server rendered that means this component completely renders on the server uh let me just go ahead and show you real quick from the networks tab and right here if you go into the preview and search for this text you're going to find it right so this is a text which you're going to find you can see it even more clearly if i go ahead and include an expression like 2 plus 2 right so if i now go ahead and refresh this and just give it a second to restart the server you see we get a 4 but if you take a look inside the server rendered response what you're going to see is that you actually get a 4 instead of 2 plus 2 expression which your front end needs to calculate so what's essentially happening here it's not server side rendering as per se it's more about uh, you know just just react saying that hey i want a part of this application to be sent by the server right so this is this is more like it that react server components are a part of a application which is processed and sent by the server this is this is sort of the way i'm thinking about it all right so first of all let's see how the search behaves so i'm gonna write wrote here and you can see that it filters out uh the ui just like that and the funny thing about this is if you are, if your ui is in a certain state and if you try to remove this you're gonna see that your ui maintains state now this might seem like an obvious thing uh but what is really happening here is that you're getting the part of this ui generated from the server right it's not like a custom javascript logic well technically it is uh, under the hood but you don't have to write a custom javascript logic where you are updating the state it's actually react synchronizing between the server sent ui and the client ui right and merging it and making sure the ui is in uh, not a conflicted state or not you know not messed up so that's pretty cool that's that's one way of using server side components from react another interesting thing about this is that right now if you go ahead and in the sources if you go ahead and see um you have these many components right now loaded on your page right but if you go ahead and click on one you're going to see no other component gets loaded why because the ui for this component is created on the server from the server and there is no external component being downloaded that means I mean converting this into a valid html requires a little bit of javascript but not so much to render a react tree right so this brings us to the things which you cannot do in react server side components and the first one is that uh, you cannot have interactivity in these components right that means that any file ending with node.server.js should not have a you know use state or use effect or on click handlers or, or stuff like that why because it simply does not make sense because you are not sending javascript under the wire right so you're, you're sending something else which is not um to be honest javascript right that's that's the simplest way to put it but that's that another thing is that you can from a server component you can use a client component that is a component only responsible for rendering on the client so if you see this node editor this component right here which you see when you click on edit button oops this node editor right here it is a client component and will always be a client component and you can go ahead and let's see if you go to components not really components if you go to sources right here you're going to see node editor would now be loaded right so this node editor is available but if you refresh this window and if you take a look at initial load you're gonna not see this node editor because this is not required 
So this gets conditionally loaded whenever you need it, right? Out of the box, you don't really need to code split this because uh, node editor.client.js is requested. So that's a client component, right? Um, the next thing is that there are certain files which do not have a .client or .server extension. These files can be used as both. That means they can be rendered on client as well as on server. If you use node preview in a server.js file, I think we are using it here, yep. If you use it like this, then your data goes like this sort of like <clears throat> weird representation of data down the wire, right? If you use it as a client, then obviously it will go down as a JavaScript bundle inside your JavaScript bundle. And uh, yep, then it will be used, right? As, as a regular React component. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And one interesting thing again, you could see if you could see right here, not really this one, db dot, let's see, query, right? So you can see that you're actually running node things on inside a React component, which is to be honest, not possible um, inside of React like ever, right? except Next.js when you can write it and get server side props or get static props and stuff like that. But this is pretty cool, right? Because this thing never leaves the backend. This function, this JavaScript representation never leaves the backend. What leaves the backend is this, this weird representation. So you're fine. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This is a super alpha sort of preview. And uh, you can go ahead and obviously set this up yourself if you go to this video or not really video i'll just leave all the links in the description for you to check this is the repo for this particular demo which i just just uh, showed you and it, it really looks snappy right and i'm pretty sure this will look snappy on a on a production server as well because now you're just bringing in parts of the ui into the picture so yeah, that's pretty much it for React server rendered components. What do you like the most about them? Do you think they are confusing? You know, you would like to know more about them. What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. That is all for this video. And I'm going to see you in the next one.